like this
good morning. Before we begin the Mass, let's turn to focus on the celebration of the Eucharist. May we request that cell phones be turned off. As a reminder to everyone, please take good care of your personal belongings. Please do not leave your trash inside our church. Parents are likewise reminded to look after their children and not let them play or loiter around while Mass is going on. For an orderly distribution of communion, this will be done by rows. We continue to remind everyone to wear the proper attire in attending the Mass. You can see on the tarpaulin near our entrance the proper dress code for the Holy Mass. During the Eucharistic celebration, we invite everyone to actively participate by joining in the singing and reciting the responses flashed on the screen. Please all rise and we will now begin the Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. By His transfiguration, Jesus shows us that the radiance of His glory comes from His acceptance of the sufferings and trials foretold by the Law and the Prophets. The cross brought Jesus to the glory of Easter, which is transfiguration for shadows. May we see our trials and difficulties as opportunities for growing in faith and hope. We call to mind our sins and ask the Lord's pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, 
to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because he acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The Word of the Lord.
I believed, even when I said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your meads, O Jerusalem. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. How will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us. Who will condemn? Christ Jesus it is who died, or rather was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The Word of the Lord. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, 
This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Isang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. And uh, we also greet those uh, joining us from their homes sa ating live streaming Mass. Welcome to our Mass this second Sunday of Lent. And we have heard in our Gospel the account of the transfiguration of Jesus. Pagbabagong anyo ni Jesus. Ito ay ating dinadasal sa fourth luminous mystery ng Santo Rosario. Bakit nagbagong anyo si Jesus? Para lang ba magkaroon ng new look? Maiba naman ang itsura. No? Para ba mas maging sikat? Mas magkaroon ng maraming tagahanga? Maraming uh, mga artista nag, nagpapa-retoke ng muka para sumikat? No? O kaya siya ba ay nagbagong anyo dahil may nais siyang takasan? para hindi siya makilala ng mga umuusig sa kanya. Pagnilayan po natin ang tanong na ito, bakit nagbagong anyo si Jesus? Tatlong P para sa ating pagninilay. Una, ito ay para sa pagbabagong loob ng kanyang mga alagad. Before the event of the transfiguration of Jesus, Sinabi na ni Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad na siya ay huhuliin, papahirapan at papatayin. And what was the reaction of His disciples? Nang hina ang loob nila. They were discouraged. Siguro nasabi nila kay Jesus, What will now happen to us? We have left everything and followed you. At sasabihin mo ngayon, iiwan mo kami. Ano nang mangyayari sa amin? Siguro yung ilan sa mga alagad na Yesus na isip, habang may panahon pa, tumakas na tayo para hindi na tayo madamay. Their hearts were filled with discouragement because of the suffering that Jesus will face. At dahil naramdaman ito ni Yesus, He brought with Him Peter, James, and John sa bundok at nagulat silang mga alagad sa nakita nila. Nagbagong anyo si Jesus. Nagningning sa kaputian ng kanyang damit. Ipinakita ni Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad na hindi lang siya tunay na tao, siya rin ay tunay na Diyos. And they heard a voice saying, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Para bang sinasabi sa kanila ng tinig na iyon, huwag kayong magpadala sa inyong takot. Huwag niyo siyang iiwan. Pakinggan ninyo siya. And this event brought about a change of heart sa mga alagad ni Jesus. Kung dati, sila ay puno ng pangamba at takot. Pagkatapos nilang makitang nagbagong anyo si Jesus, they were filled with hope. At ito ang nagagawa sa atin ng panalangin. Pinibigyan ng pag-asa ang ating puso. I remember noong nga panahon ng lockdown, no? first months of the pandemic, nagkaroon ng pag-aaral na marami ang na-depress dahil sa sitwasyong iyon. No? Walang makalabas ng bahay, no? walang gala, no? doon lang sa kwarto, doon lang sa bahay. No? At uh, ayon sa pag-aaral na iyon, yung taong madasalin, yung taong may pananalig sa Diyos, yung taong kumakapit sa Diyos, madaling nakaka-recover 
sa depression, sa kawala ng pag-asa. Because this is the effect of making time for the Lord in prayer. It melts our fears at pinapalitan ng pag-asa at lakas. And this is what happened to the disciples of Jesus. Para saan ang pagbabagong loob ng mga alagad ni Jesus? And this is my second point. Ito ay paghahanda para sa pagpapakasakit ni Jesus. Kung tutuusin, pwede namang takasan ni Jesus ang uh, paghuli sa Kanya para hindi siya mapako sa krus. Pero hindi iyon ginawa ni Jesus. Hindi binago ni Jesus ang problema na haharapin niya. Binago ni Jesus ang puso ng kanyang mga alagad. When confronted with the problem of suffering, Jesus did not change the problem. He will face the cross. He will face the suffering. He will embrace the cross. Jesus rather changed the hearts of His disciples so that they may face the problem with faith in God. At minsan, totoo ito sa buhay natin. Lahat tayo may dalang pasanin at problema sa buhay. At imbis na baguhin at takasan natin ang problema, baka ang kailangang baguhin ay yung ating pananaw sa pagharap nito. At ito yung tinuro ni Jesus sa kanyang mga alagad. He changed his, their hearts, filled their hearts with hope para kapag dumating sa punto na nakita nilang pinapasan ni Jesus ang krus, ang paghihirap, hindi sila panghinaan ng loob. Sila ay patuloy na manalig sa Diyos, umasa sa Diyos. That the suffering that Jesus will face, He will overcome it by the help of God's grace. At ito rin ang imbitasyon sa atin. Ano man ang ating uh, haraping pasanin at krus sa buhay, mapagtatagumpayan natin sa tulong at awa ng grasya ng Diyos. Manalig tayo sa Kanya. At ano ang imbitasyon nito para sa atin? And this is my last point. Ito ay paanyayang manalangin. Ngayong panahon ng kwaresma, let us make time for prayer. Because every time we pray, that is a transfiguration experience. Jesus fills our hearts with hope. May nagbabago sa atin tuwing nagdadasal tayo, tuwing nagsisimba tayo. Siguro yung itsura natin, ganoon pa rin, hindi nagbabago. Pero yung puso natin, pagkatapos manalangin, napupuno ng pag-asa. Minsan, merong nangumpisal sa akin, no? Pagkatapos ng misa sa gabi, siya pala ay matagal na nga nag-aabang ng paring magpapakumpisal. No? At habang siya ay nangungumpisal, ramdam ko yung bigat ng kanyang pasanin sa buhay. No? Siya ay isang uh, gun for hire. Bayaran. Totoo pala yun. No? May mga tao palang ganun. No? Binabayaran para pumatay ng tao. At dahil nagawa niya iyon, ang bigat ng kanyang pakiramdam. Napaiyak siya sa kanyang pangungumpisal. At uh, pagkatapos ng ilang uh, um, counsel no, at pahikinig, sabi niya sa akin, Father, salamat po at nakinig ka. Salamat at may napagsabihan ako. Salamat sa iyong payo. Gumaan ang aking pakiramdam. That is a transfiguration experience for that person. Dahil siya ay lumapit sa Diyos ng umpisal, lumapit sa sakramento, nagkaroon ng pagbabago sa kanyang puso. 
nandoon pa rin ang problema. He will have to face the consequence of what he did. But because he turned to God, there was a change of heart. That also happens to us whenever we pray. Nagkakaroon ng pagbabago sa ating puso. May the Lord transform our hearts, fill our hearts with hope so that we may exert effort always to become better persons. Nandyan pa rin ang krus at pasani natin sa buhay. Hindi ito babaguhin ng ating panalangin. Ang babaguhin ng panalangin ay yung ating pananaw, yung ating puso na harapin ito ng may pananalig sa Diyos. As we continue our journey this land, let us remember this transfiguration event of Jesus. Nagbagong anyo si Jesus para sa pagbabago ng loob ng kanyang mga alagad. Ito ay paghahanda para sa haharapin niyang krus. Pag sumikapan natin maglaan ng panahong manalangin para baguhin ng Diyos ang ating puso. May the Lord fill our hearts with hope so that we can face the crosses of life ng may pag-asa at pananalig sa Diyos. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. In Jesus, the Father has shown us what life with its sorrows and pains means for us and for our salvation. In our weakness and inability to understand the meaning of suffering, we pray, Lord of Light, listen to our prayer. In a world impatient with discomfort and imperfection, may the Church be a sign that all our pilgrims in this world that is in agony while waiting for the fullness of God's kingdom. We pray. Lord, like, listen to our prayer. Amid so much materialism and hedonism, may Pope Francis, our bishops, clergy, and consecrated men and women Continue to witness to the gospel values of poverty and sacrifice. We pray. Word of light, listen to our prayer. May government officials listen to the voice of the poor and the weak instead of giving in to the demands of the rich and powerful. We pray. May the transfigured Christ inspire us to rise from fear, anxiety, and despair, and transform us into a people of courage, hope, and love. We pray. May we grow in the faith and trust that we are not lost in death, but safe with the risen Lord in the hands of God. We pray. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Lord, touch us with your grace, celebrating your Son's transfiguration, 
May we fill each moment of our lives with great faith and hope in you. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told his disciples his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. You are indeed the Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of His death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have beheld us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is better of the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jesse, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all of have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Isidore, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray like Jesus as we say. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of our church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with her will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us, while still on earth, to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have a second collection for the pontifical work of St. Peter the Apostle, formation of seminarians, novices, clergy, and religious all over the world. Any donation you give and share is much appreciated. Announcements. Our second collection last Ash Wednesday for the Hapag Asa feeding program had a total of 21,041 pesos. Our sincere thanks for your generosity. We encourage everyone to join their community in their stations of the cross during all Fridays of Lent. The Parishes Commission on Family is inviting everyone to their Ugnayan Fellowship on February 28th, Wednesday at 7.30 in the evening. March 1 is First Friday. Holy R is at 5.30 in the afternoon, followed by the Holy Mass at 6.30 in the evening. March 2 is First Saturday. There will be Mass for the elderly at 6.30 in the morning. Everybody is invited to the Parish Lenten Recollection on March 16, Saturday, at 7.30 in the evening, with Reverend Father Jonathan Cadiz as our speaker on the topic, Pangangalaga, Pagkalinga, at Pagmamahal. The parish will hold a kumpilang bayan on May 11 for children 12 years old and above. Candidates must present their PSA birth certificate and baptismal certificate with annotation of four confirmation purposes. For those 17 years old and above, certificate of no record of confirmation from three parishes where the child lived from ages 12 to present. Registration deadline is on March 22, 2024. For details, please refer to the tarpaulin posted outside the church. The parish will have its Lenten pilgrimage on March 25, Holy Monday, in the province of Rizal, Morong, Baras, Tanay, Pililia, and Antipolo for 3,000 pesos. This is on a first-come, first-served basis. 
The pilgrimage fee is inclusive of aircon bus, t-shirt, pilgrimage kit, AM and PM snacks, breakfast, lunch, dinner, bottled water, and church donations. To those interested, please register at the parish office. To those who wish to become lay liturgical ministers, application forms are available at the parish office. Thank you for your cooperation in observing our necessary health protocols. Please all rise. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. May the Almighty God bless all of you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our Mass has been offered. Go in the peace of Christ.